Goliath, I may be small in size, but I have God on my side. I've given you one last chance to surrender. If you don't, then you're going to die. What? You are not? Alright, then watch this. Get ready, Goliath. You are going to lose this battle. You missed it. You missed it, George. No, I didn't. Didn't you see? The stone touched him. No, it didn't. Now give me the sling. Yes, George. I saw it too. The stone didn't touch Goliath. Alright, now let's see if you can touch him. Huh? Haha, <laughs> did you see that? Yes, I did, Matthew. Haha, <laughs> your stone went in the opposite direction. It did? Haha, <laughs> yes. Don't worry, you can try again next time. I think there is something wrong with this link. Good evening, kids. Hey, look, Father John is here. Good evening, Father. What are you doing here? Huh? Who is that? That's Goliath's father. Goliath? As in Goliath from David and Goliath? Yes, father. <laughs> wow, that's really good. And what are they doing with that cutout? I'm sorry, Goliath. We are practicing with our sling. See? Hmm, this is good. But make sure that you don't injure yourself while playing with this. We will take care, father. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Yes, but aren't you playing with your Goliath? We will stop playing. Please tell us the story, Father. Oh, you're that interested, is it? Hmm, come on, let's sit there and I will tell you the rest of the story. Are you all ready? Yes, Father. After the death of Saul, David became the king. He returned to Hebron and ruled there. Out of the twelve tribes of Israel, only the tribe of Judah supported him. Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, was ruling the rest of Israel. Civil war raged for years, but David grew stronger and stronger. But one of David's soldiers finally managed to kill Ishbosheth and brought his head to David. Your Majesty. Yes. I wanted to present you this. I killed Ishbosheth and brought his head as a present for you. Oh no. How dare you! Ishbosheth was the son of my master Saul. What reward shall I give to you for beheading a man in his sleep? God, behead him right away! But, but your majesty, please! He was the son of my master. God, take him away. David ruled over his kingdom just and fair. The people of Israel were very happy with David. Hey, did you hear what King David did to the soldier who killed Ishbosheth? Yes, our king is fair to everyone. We are blessed to have a king like David. God is with him. We must accept him as our king. Yes, you are right. Every other tribe in Israel is impressed with his work. You were right. I've heard that all the tribes are gathering at Hebron next week to acclaim David as their king. That's wonderful. We must go there too. All the tribes of Israel liked David and they gathered at Hebron to acclaim David as their king.
Praise God for giving us such a mighty king. And finally, after very long time, David became the king of the whole nation. The first thing that David did after becoming the king of Israel was to capture the city of Jerusalem, the fortress of the Jebusites. It became known as the city of David later on. We will call the city Jerusalem from today. Jerusalem, which means the city of peace. That's a good name, my lord. A good name for the city of David. Hmm. We must repair these walls. They are not strong enough. Yes, they look quite weak. We will strengthen it by using new walls and moats. Find the best craftsmen to do the work. Yes, my lord. We will start the work immediately. Only if... Hmm... What is it, my lord? Huh? It's nothing. I have been thinking a lot about bringing the Ark of Covenant to Jerusalem. That's good thinking, my lord. If we can bring the Ark to this city, then Jerusalem will become the religious capital of Israel. But first we must consult with Prophet Nathan and seek his approval. Yes, I will ask Prophet Nathan to come here and we will talk about this. In the meantime, you must start the repair works. Yes, my lord. And as per David's instructions, expert craftsmen from all over the world were brought to build a palace. They used marble to build and the fortress was made secure with moths and ram docks. But once the palace was built, David was bothered by guilt. Hmm, how can I live in this majestic palace when the Ark of Covenant is still in Hebron? I must bring the Ark of Jerusalem. I shouldn't have left the Ark there in the first place. We must bring the Ark to Jerusalem. Call the priest immediately. Yes, my lord. King David got the consent of priests and the ark was brought to Jerusalem. The ark reminded the Israelites of God's holiness and their need to obey him. David had to fight many battles in the early years of his reign. He was a wise soldier and a humble man who prayed for God's guidance. Prophet Nathan, my mind is disturbed. Why, my lord? All your enemies are defeated and your people are happy. And you have such a beautiful palace. This palace, that's the problem. What happened? What's wrong with this palace? How can I live in such a splendid palace when the Ark of God remain in a tent? Oh, don't worry. Our God prefers the tent. I know. But, but I want to build a beautiful house for the Lord. The most beautiful temple ever built on earth. Go ahead, do as you like. The Lord is with you. And that night Prophet Nathan received a message from God. Nathan. Huh? Nathan. God. Hmm? Tell my servant David. From the day I brought Israelites out of Egypt, I lived in the tent. You will not build a house for me, but I will build a house for you. I will secure your throne forever and rule Israel through your son. Thank you, God. God was pleased with David and through that message, he assured that David's heir will rule Israel. What? The Ammonites are refusing to pay the tribute? 
Haven't they learned a lesson from last year's war? We won't tolerate this insolence anymore. My lord, let's demolish Raba, their capital. They will learn a lesson once we do that. Hmm. Go ahead. Surround their capital. Make sure that you don't destroy the capital. It might be of use later. Yes, my lord. I'm leaving right away. Hmm. Huh? Who is that beauty? She's such a beauty. How come I didn't know such a beautiful woman was living here? Right under my nose? Later that day, David had the woman brought to the palace. What's your name, dear? My name is Bathsheba, my lord. I am the wife of Uriah. He is one of your soldiers. Ah, Bathsheba. What a sweet name. That night, David committed a great sin with Bathsheba, even though her husband Uriah was one of David's brave soldiers. But two months later, Bathsheba sent word to David informing him that she was pregnant. David realized that his sin was creating more problems. Where is Uriah? He is in Rabbah, my lord, along with Joab. Hmm. Ask Joab to send Uriah to me immediately. Go now. No, I made a big mistake. What can I do now? Hmm. I think I will send Uriah to his wife and make him think that it is his child. You sent for me, your majesty? Hmm. So, how is the war, Uriah? The Ammonites won't surrender, right? Yes, my lord. All of them have camped inside the fortress. We haven't attacked yet. Hmm. They will have to come out someday. Here. Drink this wine. Huh? No. Thanks, my lord. Are you refusing your king, Urea? Huh? I'm sorry. David planned to get Urea drunk and send him home to his wife, Bathsheba. But Urea kept refusing to go back home. Urea, it's getting late. Why don't you go to your home now? Huh? Hmm. What's the matter? Tell me. I... I can't, my lord. Huh? But why? How? How can I go home, my lord? How can I go home to my wife when my friends and my captain is there in the battlefield? Uriah was adamant that he will not leave the palace, and he slept at the door of King's palace. David tried again to send Uriah home, but Uriah refused to leave and stood by his king. When David realized that Uriah will never leave him, he did an even more wicked thing. Uriah, give the scroll to Joab. We have waited long enough. It's time to attack. Yes, my lord. And as David planned, Urea got killed in the battle, and he married Urea's wife. Bathsheba, Prophet Nathan, Your Majesty, how come you came here without a notice? Is there anything urgent? Yes, my lord. A grave crime has been committed in your country. Was it? Tell me, this is what happened. There were two men living in the same city. The rich man had flocks and sheep in great abundance. But the poor man had nothing but one fine lamp. 
the lamb ate and drank from his cup and slept on his chest. The poor man treasured the lamb like his daughter. But one day, when a guest came to the rich man's house, he took the poor man's lamb. No! What? I will not tolerate such crime under my rule. The man who did this must die. Hmm. Then you are the man! Huh? Yes, your majesty. God wanted me to speak to you, and these were his words. You were a shepherd, and I made you a king. I blessed you with wives and children, made you rich and powerful. Oh no! Why did you disobey me? You killed Uriah and took his wife. I will stir up evil against you out of your own house. Other men will take your wives and your child born of adultery will die. Oh no! I have sinned against the Lord. Have mercy on me. Oh God, please! Please wipe away my sins, my Lord. Please! David wept his heart out. His heart was broken when he realized his mistake. But in spite of his prayers, Bathsheba's son died. No! My son! Why did you take him away, my lord? Why? Don't lose heart, my dear. The Lord is punishing me for my sins. He will not abandon us. God forgave David for his terrible sin. Bathsheba had another child and they named him Solomon. God has forgiven my sins. Solomon, my son, after me, you are going to be the king of Israel. King David had many other children, but some of his children brought great sorrow to David. Wow, that's an amazing story, father. It's so inspiring. Yes, George. David was a God-fearing man. When prophet Nathan pointed his sins, he readily repented and was prepared to accept any punishment. Even in the midst of calamities, he did not lose heart and firmly believed in the mercy of God. So, King David is a model of repentance. Now, you like the story? Yes, Father. We loved it very much. All right. Now, shall I ask you a few questions? Yes, Father. Who can tell me the meaning of Jerusalem? Jerusalem means the city of peace. Correct. That was quick, Matthew. And what was the name of David's second wife? Her name was Bathsheba, father. Who was Bathsheba married to before becoming the wife of David? Bathsheba was married to Uriah, one of David's soldiers. What happened to Uriah? Uriah got killed in the battlefield. It was planned by David. Was David sorry for what he did? Yes, father. He was really sorry when Prophet Nathan pointed out his sin to him. All right. Now for the last question, what was the name of David's son born out of Bathsheba? Mm, it was Solomon. Tomorrow I shall tell you his story, the story of Solomon. Goodbye. <laughs>